It's the Bechtel Basement! With today's special guest, Taylor Watts. Hello, and welcome to the very first episode of The Bechtel Basement, the only show broadcast from the basement of a career and technology school in Texas. We're glad you're with us. I'm your host, Harrison, and with me is my, my dear, loving co-host, Josh. Josh, what's the most exciting thing about episode one? Episode one, this is the start. This is where, I guess, this, this is where it begins for the next couple of seasons or years. Um, I guess we're all kind of excited. We're all kind of scared. First time doing this for all of us, so I don't know. I guess we're all kind of anxious, but also excited. Very well articulated, Josh. Anxious and scared indeed. We'll be right back after this. <laughs> I can't breathe. I mean, literally, I can't breathe. Has this ever happened to you? Well, say goodbye to asphyxiation with all new Air Squared. It's bottled air. The process is simple. All we do is bottle the air. With 100% customer satisfaction, Air Squared is the go-to product for all your oxygen needs. So try Air Squared. It's bottled air. And we're back. You know, one of the things people don't realize about a show like this is how much work it takes to be ready for Josh and I. It's a lot of rigorous training to learn all the procedures and skills necessary to be hosts. Isn't that right, Josh? Not really. But yeah. Isn't that, yeah, yeah. Isn't that right, Josh? Yes, yes. We, we have to do a lot of rigorous training. I, I think we, it took like an hour. No, we, we, we spent weeks here at the back door with our teachers learning how to host a show correctly. Yeah. R right? Am I doing that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Oh, oh, Josh, always a card. But even with all that, there's lots that we don't know about each other. So if you'll allow us, we're going to play a game we like to call Let's Get Some Answers. Each of us has a set of, of basic questions which we will ask the other person, but there's a twist. Each of us has a secret word we're trying to get the other person to say. What are we playing for, Josh? We are playing for this trophy, which is the Best Genre Project Audio Video Production 2012. Ooh. Let's go ahead and put my word on the screen. This is my word. And Josh, what is your word? This is my word. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, All right, ladies first. <clears throat> uh, Josh, name one fast food restaurant where you'll never eat again, and why? I, I, w I would never eat at uh, KFC again, because we went there for, uh, it, w it was after a, a rehearsal, and we, we showed up, and there were flies everywhere, there was two people working in the kitchen, and um, they didn't get an order right. We walked out, we ordered uh, the $5 Colonel Phillip, and we got a, a little bowl of mashed potatoes, corn, and chicken, and it was good, but if they messed up that bad, I don't know, maybe it was an off day. We all have off days. But I've decided I don't want to go back to KFC. Is it my turn? What was, what was, what was wrong with it? Mm, it, it was dirty. It was unsanitary. Food was okay. All right. Uh, yeah, go, go ahead. All right. <laughs> Would you rather fight one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? Do I have to choose? You have to choose. Oh, oh gosh, anything but that. Um, I, th I guess I'd take the horses. You take the horses. Just because assuming I have the strength One and, and will to succeed. like. So you take 100 I take the 100 duck-sized horses. How would you fight them? Because, well, see, assuming that I, I have the ability to do this, which I most likely do not, I, I could be, you know, it would be a lot more fun. I could thrash around and kick and stuff and just, like, mow down a whole army of, of uh, duck-sized horses. Just kick? Sure. You, you want, like, headbutt? 
I'm, I could if you wanted me to. Hit. That's it? You would just kick? Well, they're, they're small. What if it was a horse-sized duck? It was a horse-sized duck? Yeah. What would you do for a horse-sized duck? It was a horse-sized um, I'd run. You'd run? Okay. That's fine. Josh! Yeah. If you're on death row, what will you choose for your final meal? All right, so going back to KFC, there was uh, that, that bowl was actually really good. Um, and although the service wasn't great, I think I'd have a KFC $5 fill-up bowl. Good. Okay, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. That's, that's okay? Good. That's good. All right, cool. Um, so, Harrison, four out of five scientists agree that red juice tastes the best. Do you agree with these findings? And if you do, why? Red juice. Um, yeah, red juice. I can't think of what flavor red juice is. Um, Cherry? Strawberry? Sure. Those are good flavors. Thanks, Harrison. Banter partner. All right. Oh, uh, Josh, All what's right. the best department at the grocery store? Uh, I, I need this, Josh. You need this. I need so do this. I, and you're not giving it to me either. Um, the best section of the grocery store. I'd say the, uh, you know the, the little magazine rack as you're checking out? Yeah. Uh, that's my favorite section. Because you never, like, actually, you're leaving, and you look at it, and you go, that's stupid. But you want to read more. So I always read more whenever my, my parents aren't looking. That's my favorite section. I feel like this is a safe place. We can tell our secrets here. Thanks, Josh. I, Thanks. I will honor that secret. Okay, thank you. What's the largest land mammal, Harrison, you could conceive, conceivably beat in a fight? Beat in a fight? Yeah. Probably, probably a, a pro probably a, a duck-sized horse. A duck-sized horse. Most likely. Would you would you run? Would I run from a horse-sized duck? Yes. Yeah. Or would you fight it? Would, would I fight what? Would you fight the duck-sized horse? Sure, if you want me to. How would you fight it? Would I fight it? I kick it. You kick it? Yeah. Just kick it? Sure. Yeah. I I guess I'd punch it. I won. Did I win? Did I am I, did I win? This isn't very rewarding. Okay, we'll be right back with Taylor Watts. But first, what happens when you combine balloons and trivia? This isn't fair. Let's find out. Welcome to Balloon Bonanza. I'm here today with Alex. Hi. Hi. Colton. What's up? Mr. Upchurch. Hello. And Jesus. Hello. All right, the aim of the game is to keep one balloon between each person. If they let it fall, they, they lose the round. If they answer a question incorrectly, they will get more balloons added to their current count. Today's theme of questions is Marvel. Okay, Macy, please bring out the balloons. And all right. Let's start with Mr. Upchurch. Mr. Upchurch. Who founded the company later known as Marvel Comics? Um, I, I don't know. It was Martin Goodwin. Macy, please bring out a balloon. All right, Colton. Let's start with you. In 2013, Marvel held what share of the comics market? 80%. Incorrect. 33.5%. Macy, please bring him out. All right, Mr. Upchurch. Who was the official listed? Oh! That's round one, folks. Here we go. Let's start with Alex's team this time. Alex. Who was the official listed as publisher? Marvel <laughs> Incorrect. It was Adri Abraham Go Goodman. I know. You were close. Nice, Macy. I am so glad I hired her. All right. <laughs> oh, did y'all lose already? All right. Hey, Zeus. Let's go with you. The company's first true editor, writer-artist Joe Simon, teamed with artists and emerging industry notable Jack Kirby to create what? Captain America? Correct! Captain America and Captain America Comics number one, March 1941. Colton, you ready? Yes. When Simon left the company in late 1941, who did Goodman make editor? Mark. Incorrect. Liebherr. Mr. Upchurch. 
What did the post-war American comic market see? They saw a reduction in the number of superhero comics. Correct. Alex, this is all you. The first modern comics with the Marvel brand were what science fiction anthology? <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Journey into Mystery, number 69, in the teen humor title, Tasty Walker. Oh, well, that's a shame. Mr. Upchurch and Jesus are winners for today. Congratulations. You want to know what you won? Sure. Nothing. All right. All right. That's the end for this week's show. We'll see you all next time. Have a good day. Wave, guys. Our guest today is the owner and proprietor of The Vintage Freak in Bedford, Texas. Please welcome to the basement, Mr. Taylor Watts. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Taylor, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> All right. Um, t tell us a little bit about your store. Well, it's uh, primarily records and vintage audio equipment. Uh, we have different vendors, uh, like um, we do vintage clothing, um, we do vintage smalls, oddities, weird stuff sometimes, uh, my, but my primary business, I guess, is actually the plaza itself. Um, we have in the plaza, in Retro Plaza, we have an arcade, vintage arcade. Oh. Uh, in that same system, place, we have uh, Retro Madness Tech Factory, which is a toys, video games, and uh, Tech mm -hmm. Factory is a repair shop uh, where we repair anything from Atari to PlayStation 4. Um, we have a couple clients that we'll get a hundred pieces at a time and fix them up and send them out so what uh what got you started in all this <laughs> i've always been a junker so uh uh family's junkers my grandfather was a junker uh and i say junker merchandise merchandise so like <laughs> or treasure hunter maybe that's a better word but uh i i like finding value in uh unusual places so uh and it's it's a treasure hunt. I enjoy it. And there's yeah. tons of value in trash, what people consider trash, or thrift stores, or estate sales, garage sales. Um, and, you know, even though records are my main business, I'm not going to turn away a good deal on anything <laughs> that can be, money can be made. I mean, it's, it's my business. So. Cool. What are some of the weirdest or most memorable items you've sold? Or have? <laughs> well, I tend to go towards value. So, um, I look for unusual items and I'll, I'll go to estate sales, I'll get up in attics. Um, of course, there's vintage tube amplifiers are some of my favorite things to find. Like I love audio uh, and the music side. One of the m more interesting pieces I've ever found was called a Kim, Kim-1, but it was, it was a personal computer from like 1977. And it just looks like this nondescript circuit board. You wouldn't think anything of it with a little LED this big, we ended up selling it for $2,000. It was uh, one of the first official personal computers before the Mac. Hmm. And it said that Wozniak, Steve Wozniak, basically used that as a base for one of the original Macs. So uh, the market's interesting because uh, it, it, the people who are buying this are either in Japan or in Silicon Valley, and they're looking for unique historical value in electronics, which is kind of a, something you just don't think about, you know, seeing an old computer board, uh, but it's, it's got a lot of history. And um, that's kind of, that's probably one of my favorite items I've ever oh. found, just because I'm, um, I'm, an, I'm an electronics nerd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really, uh, really good story. Um, I, I, I think you have some stuff to show us, don't you? Well, first, I think I got a couple pieces out for y'all's wall back here. Wow. Uh, We're always looking for Yeah, things. yeah, yeah. Well, this was made, well, this one I found at a... At what a, in God's name is this? Oh, well, that, that's, a, that's a piece for, for, I say, a local artist. Let's we'll say a local artist. Actually, she works for me. We get creative sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. You, you want to... You can throw stuff away, or you can make something, create mm -hmm. something, create value from nothing, and... Maybe this isn't for everybody, but there's a there's I'm a market. We we I'm actually part owner in a business called Horror Freak, and we sell nothing but horror items. Huh. So you learn a lot about niche markets when when I'm you know in what we do. And this is something I found in Goodwill, and it was a 
I just the mullet itself. <laughs> it's a 1991 by a man named Thomas. Don't let me even try to say that name. Pedro. Pedro. Pe 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 and I hope uh -huh. he's out there somewhere because this is incredible, and we want to know who you are and if you're still playing That's guitar. Very nice. I like the strat. I want a Stratocaster like that. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, I wouldn't know one thing about that <laughs> uh, guitar. I've, I've I've gotten a, like a one of my pickers brought in a Fender tube amplifier one time, and that was cool. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but y'all have these for your walls, and hopefully he'll he'll be a guest on your show. So that would be cool. incredible. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. 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 Pedateri. Yeah. Cool. This, yeah. There you go. Write us in. We'll find him. What is next? All right. Okay. Well, this, this is actually stuff, and if you see, I'm oh sweating boy. down to my belly button. This is uh, inf this is stuff that we found just today, and and again, I'm this is an old um, it's it's essentially an old printer that would take care of uh, I think they did water meters uh, stuff like that, but it would have you roll the paper through, <laughs> it would essentially a seismograph. You could hook up any type of different meter to this, but it's all mechanically driven. This is pre-computer, pre-transistor. you know, transistor. So these were required. In the state that we just saw, this poor guy was a hoarder. There was like 10 of these. Oh, wow. The only example we can find on eBay uh, sold is, an, is actually a newer version of this, and they go about three, three to $500. Um, but we've got eight of them. So it's something that you wouldn't consider to have value, but when you're looking at $300, uh, that's a good day's work for me, yeah. you know. But, I, but I've got other stuff. Oh, wow. Um, this is more up my alley as far as my business. Uh, this is a uh -oh. rack mount Macintosh 7100. Um, it's untested, dirty. It came out of a bigger system, but I haven't actually looked it up. Uh, Macintosh is a well-respected vintage audio uh, uh, company, and it's, it's kind of like a unicorn to find one of these in the wild. Yeah. And so today's been a good day. You know? yeah. I'm going to sell it for our client, and, uh, and we'll share profit, and that's typically how we do it. So how much would this go for? I don't know. <laughs> you want me to look it up? Can I look it up? Sure. Well, we'll, well I'll tell you what. I'll look it up, and we can get something else out. All right. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll help you. I don't want to hold this anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, stick it up here, there. Here, me, yeah, this me. one, I have no clue. Like, Wait. it's a lens of some sort. Like a and telescope? We don't know. Uh, hmm. I can't find anything, but it has a huge lens. And all I could find was a similar one on eBay. It sold for about $100. That was this big. Hmm. So if this one's hundred dollars at this big I'm hoping it scales properly in value uh, I hope you know uh, but it's it's something that there could have only been one made and huh. if it if a specialty person knows what it is uh, they, they'd have to pay up yeah. and that's yeah. the goal is to, <laughs> is to get someone you get the person that wants it the most and that's and that's how uh, we make bring the most value out of these items that's cool the, um, all right uh, th these, I've heard y'all have a video game place. These were outside in a barn, and <clears throat> from what I can tell, very clean. Yeah, they might need a tad of a, a wash. Yeah, a little bit of a dust off. Yeah. So, so fine. this one is, these are arcade boards. So I'm going to give these to my guy at my arcade, and he might say, Taylor, throw these in the dumpster, and and well, that's what I do, but. Um, this one is 1985 Atari Games, Temple of Doom. So this would have gone. This goes in an arcade. I'm gonna make a mess of y'all's place. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, that's fine. It's already a mess. Yeah. Okay. Well, not a mess like I can make. <laughs> <laughs> this one's Midway Games. Let's see if we can find a name on it. It's got those little spikes on the back. These are. This is. Uh, yeah. This is an old green board circuit board. Oh, here we go. Nope. Dang, Bally Midway. So, I don't know. It could. It actually could be a pinball machine. It's got a tag on it. Uh, Sun, Sun Belt. Yeah. Uh, you got me, man. Uh, what I would do, my my buddy at our, or at um, the Quarter Lounge, uh, Tim. 
he's going to, I'm going to have this in the parking lot and I'll put it like that and he's going to know what it is. So you just got to have a guy yeah. that knows. So, but this one is kind of the, it's the mystery, you know, it's, yeah. it's the fun one to make because, you know, the, just the quick, the quick little look on eBay, you just don't know. You just mm -hmm. don't know. And it's something to. that was in an estate. It was left by the owner. They obviously didn't care enough uh -huh. to keep it. And uh, we're going to try to sell it for the new owner of the home and pay for the house. No, I don't know that. But <laughs> <laughs> that's the goal, right? Yeah, to, get, yeah. to get them the most money. So I think uh, as far as that goes, that might be I have a few more boards. But yeah. uh, that's just stuff I found um, today. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for stopping no, by. No problem. No problem. All right. Well, we'll be right back after this. Hello, and welcome to Finish the Lyric. Today, we will be asking the students of the Bechtel if they can finish the lyric. Let's get started. <laughs> finish the lyric. Hey, now. <laughs> is this the real life? Or is this just fantasy? Ding, 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 ding. A tornado flew around my room before you came. Ding, 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 ding. You got it right. What does the fox say? <laughs> Is it choice A, ring, ding, 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 da, ding. B, ding, 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 ra, ding. Or C, bing, ding, 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 ra, ding. A, I think. Ding, 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 ding. Poopity scoop. Poopity hoop. <laughs> Finish the lyric. I'm blue. I don't know. <laughs> Your choices are A, bada do, B, da, do, B, da, or B, da, be, do, di, ba, da, do, or C, ba, do, B, da, do, da, di. <laughs> It was B. Ba da do dee da do dee. Well, this is it for our very first show. I want to thank Taylor Watts for stopping by, even though he did tell me that my staple gun is not worth very much. And and by the way, Josh, how is that Diet Dr. Pepper? You know that what you're is having? worth quite a bit that I found is this Diet Dr. Pepper is absolutely fantastic. Uh, it has all the electrolytes that you need in a good hard day's work. Hard days. Hard days work, uh, especially here down in the basement uh, where it gets very claustrophobic and very hard to breathe. This really is a breath of fresh air. Dr. Pepper, make sure to check out the Vintage Freak in Bedford. A and Josh, how do you think today went? I think today went pretty well. I just, baby hands creeped me out. Me so. I thought they were pretty cool. <laughs> um, well, uh, we had a lot of fun today and we had some laughs, but let's not forget the most important thing. One man's staple gun is another man's trash. And sometimes, baby arms are pretty cool. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, the basement is closed. Mm -hmm.